Hey friends, I'm Trinity Mitchell, better known as your friend, Trin, and welcome to Friend Fusion. Thank you so much for being a part of my community. I know that this would not be possible without you. I'm going to say it again. Thank you. I'm so grateful that you would tune in here at Friend Fusion. What I love most about this platform is... It allows all of us to get better. It's not like that next reality TV show that we all get around to get the latest tea, but when you come to Friend Fusion, you just wanna get better. You just wanna get better and better and better because we're all friends here. I'm your friend, you're my friend. I want you to do me a favor. Share the video right now. Stop what you're doing, share the video. I'm sharing mine right now. Text a friend and say, yo, friend fusion is on. Especially those group messages, they got all the juicy tea. Y'all need to be better. Because we're all about getting better. And here at Friend Fusion, that's what we do best. We get better. I love you guys. I can't wait to spend the rest of the evening with you. We ain't gonna be here for a long time, but it's definitely gonna be a good time. Whatever you do, go friend. Hey friends, I'm Trinity Mitchell, better known as your friend, Trent, and welcome to Friend Fusion. Thank you so much for being a part of my community. I know that this would not be possible without you. I'm going to say it again. Thank you. I'm so grateful that you would tune in here at Friend Fusion. What I love most about this platform is... It allows all of us to get better. It's not like that next reality TV show that we all get around to get the latest tea. But when you come to Friend Fusion, you just want to get better. You just want to get better and better and better. Because we're all friends here. I'm your friend. You're my friend. I want you to do me a favor. Share the video right now. Stop what you're doing. Share the video. I'm sharing mine right now. Text a friend and say, yo, Friend Fusion is on. Especially those group messages, they got all the juicy tea. Y'all need to be better. Because we're all about getting better. And here at Friend Fusion, that's what we do best. We get better. I love you guys. I can't wait to spend the rest of the evening with you. We ain't gonna be here for a long time, but it's definitely gonna be a good time. Whatever you do, go friend. I am Trinity Mitchell, better known as your friend Trin, and I have to introduce you to my friends over at Higher Purpose Co. Now, you may be wondering, Trinity, why do we need to know about Higher Purpose Co.? Because, friend, they empower black entrepreneurs right here in Mississippi. They are doing the work to literally give us political, cultural, as well as financial power. Can we get into that? Can we get into that, friend? What I love most about Higher Purpose Co. is they remind me of me. Like, here it is. I don't do like the cancel culture, but I tell you guys all the time that Friend Fusion is a sign to cancel the cancel culture. Well, let me just tell you this. Higher Purpose Co. is a sign to cancel everything that the enemy plotted against black people like generational poverty, institutionalized racism, and structured inequality. I absolutely love partnering with them. And I want you to join me, friend. Listen, I'm the kind of friend that you can trust my friends. You know what I'm saying? So I need you to do me a favor, friend. I want you to go to higherpurposeco.org today like right now and I need you to find a way that you can partner or donate to this foundation because it is making so many of our lives better here in Mississippi. Yes, higherpurposecode.org. Go now. Thanks, friends. You know, Did you really think I was going to play nice with you? Did you really think I was going to come in here and be what? Above it all? You are a mean woman. You asked for it. <laughs> 
Hey friends, welcome to today's episode of Friend Fusion. I am so excited about this conversation because we're going to be talking about the state of the black family, the state of the black church, education in the black community, as well as leadership of the black males in our community. You all know for so many years, the black people have been conditioned to dislike ourselves. We've been conditioned to consider ourselves the bottom of the bucket, but today that changes. We're going to know and feel and get the strategies that it's going to take for us to be the change that we want to see. But we're going to embrace how far we've already come. I am proud to be a black woman. I'm proud to be a graduate of an HBCU and everything else attached to me black. Okay, period. I'm blackity, black, black. I'm black, black. And I love this for us. And guess what? Today we're going to celebrate it and keep celebrating and keep celebrating. And we don't need permission to do that. Stay tuned for today's episode of Friend Fusion. Infusion, marker, and action. Hey friends, I'm Trini T. Mitchell, better known as your friend Tran, and welcome to today's episode of Friend Fusion. Today I have with me such a special guest, and what I really admire about him the most, he doesn't just preach it, he lives it. And I just decided one morning, I was up praying, and I'm like, I'm just going to shoot him a DM, I'm just going to see what happens, and he responded to me. And so, I don't want to say his name, I'm just going to slide the cameras to him, friends, and y'all... <laughs> Welcome with me, our good friend, Pastor Dr. Jamal Bryan. You want to say hey to our friends? Hey, everybody. So honored and excited to be here. This is Friends, the Black Version. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here today. You know, I love that you are pro-black. Yes. Because, uh, you know, we have a lot of black people who are not pro-black. Yes. Uh, one thing I love about my life in general is being black, the black culture. I went to HBCU, Mississippi Valley State University. Nice. Yes. Um, I absolutely love everything about the black experience. And while I know that we have so much room to grow, we still have come so far. Yes. And so I love that you celebrate that. Oh, no, it's my privilege. I think it's our responsibility. Yes, it absolutely. It is amazing that if we were having this conversation with a brilliant Jewish woman mm -hmm. and a young rabbi, yeah. there would be no question on celebrating being Jewish. Right, right. And for us, it's got to be an asterisk. Absolutely. Uh, so, no, I'm glad to be on the front line with you. Yes, thank you so much. Yes. Last Sunday, I saw that you have gone out and found a boy from the, is it, was it? Montgomery. In, yeah. Yes. The one that swam yes. to the fight. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> 16 years old. What made you decide, let's find him? As soon as I saw the video, uh -huh. I said, who are these people? Yeah. Uh, and what was really jarring for me uh, is I told the congregation, this is the very first time in a generation mm -hmm. we've seen black people fight back. Yes. Uh, and so that's why it was so riveting and compelling. There's nobody who you know who watched the video once. Right, right, we right. We watched it and looked right. all from the different <laughs> angles. Let me see it this again. So oh, no, absolutely, right. because all of it was so mesmerizing mm -hmm. uh, to see us find our voice yes. and to find the heart in our chest right. come out of our throat. Yeah. Uh, and so it was just on. I don't have to know him. That's my brother. Like, That's my, oh, yeah, no, I love the guy. It's holding it down. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's the best. So what was it like once you actually met the 16-year-old? I forgot his name. Do you remember it? Yes. Why Give would something. you do this to me? <laughs> so yes. Once you, Aquaman. Aquaman. Once yes. you found Aquaman, how was that meeting him? Uh, it was uh, really just a underscoring that God uses regular, ordinary people. Yeah. He's a 16-year-old. Yeah, so cool. Kind of shy, shy mm -hmm. kind of socially awkward, mm -hmm. uh, but standing firm on uh, his belief. It yeah. is uh, what the old people say. You could tell he was raised right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just a, a great young man. And you guys did something really extraordinary for him. Yes. You want to tell us about that? Yes. So we gave him $2,000 wow. uh, towards his college scholarship. Mm -hmm. He's just a high school junior, but I wanted to sow a seed in yeah. his future yeah. uh, because I believe he's going to do great and things. And it was well-deserved. I well believe. Deserved. He needed yeah. to be seen. Absolutely. Yeah, he needed to be seen. 
his parents did something that to really encourage me. They disabled all of his social media. Wow. Yeah, they said they I wanted him some level of normalcy mm -hmm. uh, so that he doesn't uh, become drunken celebrity status. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I thought that that was... Uh, Shrewd on that. I love part. it. I love yeah. it. Because you know, this is a generation of, this is an opportunity for us. No, yeah. yeah let's blow yeah. up. Let's get some more followers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it speaks volumes to what they have instilled in him yes. and what they want to produce in him. I yeah, agree. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about all things black. Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk about the state of the black family. Yes. I guess we can start there. So we're talking about his parents now. All right. Uh, the state of black education. All right. Um, and black family. Yes. And black male leadership. Wonderful. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, good. Yes. I got your pop quiz ready. All right, let's go. <laughs> all right, so my first question today is, we're going to hop right in. It says, when we think of the black family, it is nothing like it used to be. You can agree right so it says what do you believe is missing and how can we as people help bring love and unity back into our homes uh, i think uh the, the question really is a false premise mm -hmm. uh on what it used to be mm -hmm. uh is that we've always had single parents mm -hmm. we've always had multi-generational households uh the black family in and unto itself upon coming here was always broken and blended mm -hmm. Uh, babies being auctioned off. Right. Uh, men couldn't be in the household. Mm. And so I think that the dynamics are now being amplified. Uh, but I think that we have uh, seen it through the course of our time here. Mm -hmm. I am uh, looking at uh, building the first senior housing in America, if you can imagine, the very first senior housing in America for seniors who have custody of their grandchildren. Wow. Now, to every black person, this makes sense. Yeah. This ain't even a novel idea. Right, right. Uh, but when you put it in the context, there is no senior facility in the nation mm -hmm. where children can stay past the weekend. Wow. Uh, you're from Mississippi. I'm from Maryland. Mm -hmm. And all of us got friends who was raised by their grandmother. So true. Uh, <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah, so, so true. Uh, this is a part of who it is that we are. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the family dynamics have uh, have room for improvement. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if it's new necessarily. So in establishing this facility for the senior citizens who are raising their grandchildren, yeah. what made you say we need this? Like, I'm going to be the one to initiate this. For yeah. us. I, I wanted to think of something novel to do when mm -hmm. I considered that this is the very first time in American history we have more seniors than teenagers. Mm. So right now, what You're we're teaching me on, something. Listen, I'm trying. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that right now in America, there are more 60-year-olds than 16-year-olds. Wow. There are more senior centers than middle schools. Wow. And most of our churches have a youth pastor but no seniors pastor. Hmm. Uh, when I pastored in Baltimore, I pastored predominantly a hip hop church. Yeah. And now I'm pastoring a Motown church. Yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> I had to look through a different lens on how do I effectively do multi generational mm -hmm. ministry. And so thinking through that. Multi generational yes, ministry. That's yeah, so that, important. That I had to do mm -hmm. uh, something that uh, really speaks to a need yeah. that has not yet been addressed. Brennan is often saying how we have churches, but we don't have churches who serve serve a present age church. Yes. And when he says that, he means multi-generational. Yes. You're the only pastor I've heard say that. Well, I'm glad. That's a big deal. Yes, yeah, submit my name for a Nobel <laughs> yeah. Peace Prize. Yes. That's a big deal. So about four in 10 black people, which is 39%, yes. live in the U.S. households that are headed by married couples as of 2021. Yes. Roughly three in 10 black people, which is 31%, live in households whose household head is a female. Mm -hmm. And 5% live in male-headed households. Yes. Fewer than two in 10, which is 16%, are part of non-family households. How would you say these statistics are affecting the black child? I think that we have to look at it, not from a skewed perspective, mm -hmm. to know that white men lead in domestic violence. Mm -hmm. uh, white uh, marriages... Far out, white divorces exceed black yes. divorces. Mm -hmm. uh, white children are more prone to molestation than mm. black children. So when we look at those numbers, we've got to look at it from a, a much more universal construct right. of what those mean. Those numbers by themselves in isolation are jarring. Yeah. Uh, but we've got to look at the larger numbers. The same thing when you deal with black criminality. Mm -hmm. uh, that more uh, black men are in jail, dot, 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 but they're in jail for nonviolent offenses. Right. 
So white men are in jail for murder, yes. um, robbery, mm-hmm. for battery, yes. <laughs> for assault. Other things. Yeah. And uh, but black men are in jail for holding something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we get and yeah. we get that rap so often as black yeah. people like we're the worst of the worst. Yeah. And it, I think it causes us to think of ourselves that way yeah. too. You know, it's like. We already we just know what it, it is what it is. Like yeah. if you black, it's just that target on you. It's yeah, just, no, I agree. Yeah, so yeah. sure, mm-hmm. we got room for improvement. But look mm-hmm. at what we have done. Absolutely, with broken homes. Yes, what we have been able to accomplish mm-hmm. on the backs of strong mothers. Yes, uh, but uh, the data should also reflect that black fathers, even single, mm-hmm. are more involved in the lives of their children than white fathers. And I think, too, being that we're black, we don't even consider the larger numbers. It's just that it, when we compare ourselves to other races, yes. it looks like we're the weaker. Yeah. So what do you say to the black people who just don't know any better and think, other than we should go read and catch up on ourselves, yeah. what do you say to the black people who really think that we are the bottom of the bucket. Yeah. Because some people really do. Yeah, the, I would say get out the bucket. Mm. Uh, is yeah. that unless you're living in the country, you got no business with a bucket. Yeah. Uh, that we've got to see the, the brighter side of what we mm-hmm. are. Ten people will come to you and say, girl, you look great today. You're yeah. killing it. Mm-hmm. You got a winter white with these boots that's ready for the <laughs> Paris Fashion Week. <laughs> we walk out of the studio and somebody in the hallway will say, what did that boot you got on? Right. You won't remember the 10. Mm. You remember that one person that said something negative. Yeah, that's so true. And you reevaluating the whole re- outfit. <laughs> Should I have worn these? Right. And so we have so many times look at and focus on the negative that is being said. And mm-hmm. we're not looking at the fact that uh, HBCUs now got a waiting list. So true. We're not looking yeah. for here in Atlanta... Uh, black women are the lead homeowners of any ethnicity. Yes, yes. Uh, so let's find a reason to celebrate it. I forgot year. to tell you something. I, am, okay. I have been chosen to be 40 under 40 at my HBCU. Wow. And I would Congrats. have never imagined accomplishing something like that. Won't he do it? Yeah. yeah. And I get to <laughs> no, go and celebrate great. like next weekend. No, that's amazing. Yeah, amazing. I'm cheering for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So and that being said, I'm going to switch gears to education now. Yes. I recently heard you in an interview where you stated that black people aren't encouraged to take up trades and yes. how most trades are often stable and offer stable and lucrative careers. Yes. Could you elaborate more on that? The Holy Spirit convicted me in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a third generation preacher. Mm -hmm. My dad was a bishop in the AME church. My grandfather was a bishop in the AME church. Mm -hmm. I have been pastoring now for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And embarrassing, I want to say on your podcast, I have never, ever given a scholarship for a young man that wanted to be a plumber. Wow. Never given a scholarship to a man that wanted to get a CDL license. Mm-hmm. Never given a scholarship to a young lady that wanted to go to hair school or wanted to be an esthetician mm-hmm. or go to nail school. We focus all of our energy on W.E.B. Du Bois yeah. and we ignore Booker T. Mm-hmm. Uh, not realizing that those who get a trade are making more money so than true. those with a liberal arts education. This is true. I have never seen anybody stand up in front of a church and say, let's give it up for Brother Pookie, who now (laughs) has got his barber's license. Right. Never. Right. Right. Uh, And I think that the church has got to do a better job Mm -hmm. of affirming uh, those who learn a trade Mm -hmm. and those who are getting us. What brought about your conviction, though? I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit. Mm. Absolutely. Because it it was my own hypocrisy. Oh, wow. Uh, So it wasn't that I'd given somebody a scholarship Mm -hmm. and say, hey, This is what we got to start doing differently. But uh, I have a GED, Mm -hmm. and uh, I realized when I was giving out the scholarship, the recipients had my footprint. Wow. We were giving out scholarships to people who had done well, Mm -hmm. uh, whose parents were members. Yeah. And I had to ask, is that ministry? Right. Or what's the difference between the church's scholarship committee and the county's Jack and Jill? Mm Mm-hmm. Nothing. Let's give a little hope to the people who may, <laughs> who may hold a GED because I've yes. heard you talk about that before. Yes. And yes. you talked about, I think it was only you and another person that got in at Morehouse. I was the first. You? you were the first. I hope some others have come behind me. <laughs> uh, but I, I tell the story that um, I got a GED. I got put out of school in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
You were put out. Oh, I was put out because I was at the gifted and talented high school. Right. And president of the class <laughs> and failing. So what happened? How did you get put out? Was it the grades? Just hanging. I Just... really thought I was the president. That's I hilarious. I went to class when I felt like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm holding court in the teacher's lounge. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it wasn't that I couldn't do the work. I was yeah. completely unchallenged, unmotivated. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got put out of the school, they told my parents to put me in job corps. Mm -hmm. uh, for me to get disciplined and to get focused or to put me in military. The irony of God's sense of humor yeah. is uh, I come here in uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. 2019, I'm at the back door of New Birth shaking hands, and an old lady comes and shakes my hand and says, I'm so glad you're our pastor. Wow. I said, I'm glad to be your pastor. She said, I'm so excited when they announced you were coming here. I said, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. She said, do you remember me? I said, no, ma'am, I've only been here four weeks. Please mm -hmm. be patient with me. It's, it's a whole lot of y'all. I'm not remembering everybody's mm -hmm. name. She took her glass off and said, you sure you don't remember me? I said, no, ma'am. She said, I was your guidance counselor in wow. Baltimore. And I had to repent because I didn't see it in you. Wow. And so to come full circle, mm -hmm. uh, that the person who didn't believe in you. That's beautiful. Now got to be the usher to open the door for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Is really a sign of what God will yeah. do. Yeah. And God has this way of confirming where he sent oh, you yeah, to. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That is beautiful. So you went to Morehouse. Yes. And how would you say Morehouse has affected who you've become? Oh, let me tell you. Morehouse, it, for those who are watching, if you have a son with low self-esteem uh -huh. <laughs> or ego fragility. Yeah. I'm telling you, Morehouse is a hype man machine. Really? They, uh, I'm telling you, they make you feel like you're going to take over the world. I love it. I love uh, it. So I, I, the, the saying is you can always tell a Morehouse man, but you can't tell him much. Mm -hmm. I live by it. <laughs> you I'm seem to. You, it, it's the anointing and Morehouse. Yes. Those two make you dream the impossible dream. It Do you helps. think you're ever going to be a professor there or something? I might. Yeah. I might. Have, you haven't considered it before now, huh? I only consider being the president. <laughs> never consider. <laughs> I never consider being so the typical. professor. Yeah, I get it. I always see myself at the top. I got it. I got so it. So I guess I'd I have it. to work my way mm -hmm. up. So, I got yes. it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think if you become president, you can walk in any classroom, oh, right? Oh, no. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you are hilarious. You know that? Yeah, thank you. So when you thought about, when you think about becoming the president of Morehouse, yes. how far off do we see that kind of accomplishment? Uh, nowhere in the immediate okay. future. That's in the retirement <laughs> gotcha. plan. Gotcha. Yes. I feel you. Yeah. So I think for centuries, the black community has been big on faith yes. and little on finances, mainly mm. because we simply aren't knowledgeable. Yes. As a pastor of a predominantly black church, why is it important for you to teach people both faith and financial literacy? I used to sit and be tutored by Jewish rabbis when I lived in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And uh, our old retired rabbi said something to me that changed my whole life. He said to me, tithing does not work for your churches. Hmm. Watch this. Because tithing is built on a budget. You can't ask people to tithe if you never taught them how to do a budget. Wow. So we've been asking for years, people to ask to give 10% and we never showed them where the 90 is. Yeah. So most people, watch this, check it, most people who don't tithe don't have a budget. Wow. So they can't see how they can afford it. Mm -hmm. So I stopped teaching tithing and started teaching budget. Was that scary? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was, again, this is in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I had young people, young adults. I was, this was their first church. I was their first pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, it was high risk, uh, but uh, the return on investment has been mind boggling. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So when you started teaching budget, how did you see the tithing change after people got an understanding of budget? It, it began to grow uh, because my responsibility as pastor is not just to ask for your 10, mm -hmm. but to show you how to multiply the 90. Right. It is only a welfare faith mm -hmm. that tells you to shout for increase. Yes. When 92% of black people don't own a singular piece of stock, hmm. then I, it is my responsibility to show you how do you open up an investment portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, what is in a 401k? Yeah. Why do I set aside for a rainy day? Uh, when you start teaching on that level of principle, it changes the mindset mm 
mm-hmm. uh, of the people. Yeah. Uh, as a consequence, nobody ever asked their doctor what number were you in the graduating class. Right. Nobody ever asked right. your dentist mm-hmm. what do you drive. We only ask that of the preacher Mm -hmm. because the preacher has not done the appropriate fiduciary responsibility of raising the people up. I teach the members of New Birth, never go to a church where you can tell which car is the pastor's. Mm. Because if I am doing financial literacy, 12 other people should be driving just like me. Yeah. 12 other people should be dressing just like me. Mm -hmm. So when you see my car, should be 12 others just like that in the parking lot. When they came to arrest Jesus, they had to ask which one is he, mm-hmm. because all the That's disciples good. wore the same linen robe. Mm-hmm. They, they, something is wrong if the pastor is here and all the armor bearers at K and G. I agree. Yeah, I, 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 I got to begin to operate in the biblical principle yeah. that the oil flows from the head yes. and goes down to the skirts of the robe. I love you challenging mm-hmm. people's perspective, especially like as a, a black church kid. Yes. One thing I tell my husband all the time is something I want to give our children is financial literacy and not just faith. Yeah. Um, because, you know, just to keep it 100 with you, we grew up in faith. I grew up Church of God in Christ. Oh, yes. And so I, I thank God for it. You know, <laughs> it's a lot that come with being cosmic. Yeah. But I thank God for it because I I believe in holiness. Yeah. I might have been scared into it, but let, let me show you the financial literacy just based off of denominations. Mm-hmm. It's gonna blow your mind. I'm it's ready. gonna mess up your home church. Okay. I teach this all over the country. I'm ready. To start a Kojic church, Mm -hmm. you got to get 50 people. Mm -hmm. They got to sign a sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. You send it on to Memphis to national headquarters. Okay. They send you back your credentials. Mm -hmm. To start a synagogue, you don't need 50 people. You need 12. Hmm. But the 12 have to be financially independent. Wow. I'm going to blow your mind. As a consequence, there is no Jewish synagogue in America that has a mortgage. Because it is not the responsibility of the rabbi to raise the money. Yeah. It's of the 12 leaders. Mm-hmm. Now look at the principle. Watch what I'm showing you. Mm-hmm. Jesus chose how many disciples? 12. 12. Stay with me. He chose none of them from seminary. None of them from church. He caught all of them from business. Yeah. He never chose any of the disciples in worship. Mm-hmm. He picked them while they were at their job. He says, I want to see how you work Mm -hmm. because how you work will show me how you'll apply for ministry. Wow. In the black church, our ministries are falling apart Mm -hmm. because we make people leaders because of perfect attendance. Yeah. So we we have confused Uh loyalty with competency. Mm -hmm. Just because you can pray don't mean you should be a trustee. Amen. So we've (laughs) got to do a whole nother navigation of how we uh, support the culture of the church. Yeah. Business down. Secondly, the, another part that is so radical mm-hmm. is three fourths of the disciples mm-hmm. have more education than Jesus. Wow. You got a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, an IRS talk about agent. This stuff. No. Yeah. But the pastor, Jesus, mm-hmm. is fine being surrounded by competent leaders. Yes. Just because I'm the pastor don't mean I know everything. Yes. I got to have people around me who can mm-hmm. give me some insight and some instruction it's so important. and some wisdom. If the pastor knows it all, yeah. it ain't going to happen. Right, right. Jesus is the ruler of the earth. Absolutely. But he lets somebody else hold the money. I'm big on that. I believe in yeah. surrounding, surrounding myself with people who I believe in some way are more competent or better than me. Yes. It's the only way that we can continuously make progress and get better. And another thing, I was just telling my friend Sarah yesterday that when it comes to like us as a culture, yeah. it, you know, everybody's going crazy about it. Beyonce just wrapped up her tour. Praise yes. God for her life. We're yes. celebrating. Right. So, but you know, you have so many Christians, particularly black Christians who are anti-Beyonce. But and I'm not an avid Beyonce fan. As a musician, I have a music degree. I yes. respect her artistry. Yes. Um, but I'm not a, a crazy Beehive fan. Yes. But I hate this idea in our heads that, and I'm probably going to make, you know, I'm with you today, so that's probably why I'm about to ruffle feathers because you had a pastor who ruffles yeah. all of the church <laughs> yes. folks' feathers. But I just feel like, why is it, why is it embedded in our heads that abundance doesn't belong to us? And if anybody has something, they have to be stealing. They got to be Illuminati. They got like the pastor has a nice car. He can't have a business. He can't be, you you know. Well, you have two things that we got to deal with. One 
is that uh, Beyonce on the tour amassed more money than the Beijing Olympics. Mm. So that, it, don't forget there's a reason why it's called show business. Yeah. Secondly, who are we affirming in gospel to do that kind of tour? Exactly. That ain't at a church. Mm -hmm. If gospel music is the only genre of music where you can stay on the top 10 mm -hmm. for three years. So true. We don't support new music. It's so true. We don't support new artists. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when we do, we don't want to pay them. Right. Uh, and so as a consequence, we keep recycling the same voices, the and same faces. And we talk faces. about our artists as much as we talk about Beyonce. We'd be on to something. Uh, we really would. Yeah, I am the worship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. This is, this is what I wanted to tell you. Growing yeah. up, at growing up Kojic, yes. we big in faith. I went yeah. to YPWW. I was in the Sunshine Band, all the yeah. things. Yes. And I, I, I love that my mama didn't have to force me to believe in God. Yes. I just kind of started believing in him because I seen him turn the lights on. Yes. I seen him bring food, and yes. nobody knew what was going on. It just happened for us, right? But what, one thing I'm really, really excited about uh, in becoming, the, in the next stage of my life, in parenting, is that I want to give my kids not just faith, but financial literacy, because yes. nobody teaches us what to do with the 90%. Yeah. And I think my parents were really, uh, they, they were big. They, my mama today will say, did you pay your tithe? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but as it, as it pertains to that 90%, my dad nor my mom had instruction in how to budget. And so they would... I don't want to say tithe foolishly, but they would put things before their household to, to tithe. And so that's something that I really admire about you and what you're teaching, because I feel like there'll be less children like me where you have to be like, OK, God is real. And I have faith. But faith, does faith look like the lights off? Does faith look like like lack? And I don't yes. believe it, it does. But I think that happens because we get a lot of people to go away from the church to stray away yeah. because we don't teach budget. Well, and I think that it's so necessary. Part of it, but faith is never safe. Mm -hmm. That's true. Faith is synonymous with risk. Mm -hmm. Now, risk is the substance of things hoped for. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I'm trusting God, we got to get away from a colonized prosperity doctrine mm -hmm. that would suggest if I tithe, my lights are always be on. Right. Uh, and so it is, if I suffer with him, mm -hmm. then I reign with him. Mm -hmm. Is uh, prosperity always tangible? That's good. Uh, so prosperity through the lens maybe mm -hmm. that I'm suffering, but look at God, that he made a way. Yeah. That while I'm broke, nobody's ever shouted this in the mm -hmm. mic. That God made a way for my kids to get free lunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. right. No, right. Nobody, ever, yeah. my dad convicted me on something many years ago. I preached on uh, TBN mm -hmm. for Telethon. Uh, it was their spring fundraiser for mm -hmm. those of you who don't remember TBN. Yeah. And uh, I uh, made an appeal asking people to give $1,000. Mm -hmm. Said, if you get $1,000, you're going to be blessed. Yeah. That it's going to be an avalanche of anointing that's going to hit your life. The crowd goes wild. Yeah. The studio is electric. I mm -hmm. mean, it felt like a Azusa. Mm -hmm. I get back in the green room. My phone is vibrating. Mm -hmm. It's my dad. I answer the phone. My dad says, man, I just watched you on TBN. I said, oh, great. He says, now tell me what you think the people in Kenya thought about your message who don't have $1,000. Hmm. The people who was watching in Haiti would they not receive favor? Mm -hmm. Would they not live in abundance? And it made me recalibrate. What is it that I am really uh, suggesting? I have to give out of what I have. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we have turned seed sowing into Las Vegas. Right, right. Uh, that this is a private country club mm -hmm. in a caste system yeah. of those who have access to it. And mm -hmm. so uh, we've got to make sure that our gospel is not gentrified. I got it. Uh, is that yeah. we're not preaching a suburban Jesus mm -hmm. to an inner city culture. So when you think about, let's think through the lens of prosperity. Because yes. we got a lot of preachers that say you give this seed and this will happen, this will happen. What do you think is really the key to prosperity? I'll say this to you. How old are you? 32. 32. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lay it on the floor. Yeah. And I'll let your audience pick it up. Okay. I don't know one prosperity 
word of faith preacher in the country who is successful under 40 hmm. of any denomination in any state. Mm -hmm. I can tell you up and coming PAW, Kojic, AME, mm -hmm. Baptist, Independent, yeah. because post pandemic, you got a full proof text, proof, full proof that text. Yeah. Or wh what are you really saying? Mm -hmm. Millennials want to know uh, where's the beef? Right. Right. How can this hold up? Mm -hmm. Can you substantiate this gospel? Right. Uh, and so the gospel that our parents used to watch on TV. Yeah. Not so much now. So true. Yeah, it ain't going mm -hmm. viral Yeah, uh, on that. Mm -hmm. People want to know what is the weight of that matter. Right. And so I think prosperity, as he says, I, I wish above all mm -hmm. that your soul will prosper. Yes. And that you would be in good health. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the, the fact that you and I walked around without wearing the mask every day. Yeah. And neither one of us is sucking oxygen right now. Amen. By virtue of the fact that... Um, we were in some places we shouldn't have been in. Mm -hmm. uh, and you not stopping this podcast to take medication. Right, right. Uh, is amazing. Yeah. By virtue of the fact that black women lead in prenatal deaths. Mm -hmm. And we have every bit of faith and yes. confidence. Yes. You go on full term in March. Absolutely. You know what yes. I'm saying? So my prosperity mm -hmm. is not a Birkin bag. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it is. I'm a black man driving in Georgia. Yeah. And every time the police drive past my car, mm -hmm. I can sigh in relief yes. and say, and I've made it home another day. Yeah. I think that that's what the prosperity is. I love that. Yeah. You received a ton of backlash yes. after expressing your desire to go after people who smell like weed. Yes. Now, why are you telling folks that on that camera? You know they're yes. going to come after you. Yes. <laughs> and teach black men farming by, going, by growing uh, medicinal marijuana on Newburgh's campus. Yes. While people thought you had lost your mind, I yes. thought it was revolutionary. Yes. What triggered such a thought? New Birth is the largest land-owning black church in America. Mm -hmm. And with that, I was facing $32 million worth of debt. Hmm. That wasn't going to come from selling pound cake in the fellowship hall. A fish plate. Yes. yes. So I wanted to reimagine the space that God gave us. I was not in any way mm -hmm. suggesting sell joints in the Bible bookstore. <laughs> right, right. Uh, <laughs> but really uh, changing the narrative and mm -hmm. the perspective. Uh, that did not go well. Yeah. Uh, and so as a consequence, we just received a permit and uh, we're getting ready to build 150 mini houses on our campus. Wow. Uh, that I want to sell to young millennial couples. Mm -hmm. I love it. So that we can reintroduce what does a start a home look like. I love that. Yeah. So we won't, so we won't be having the medicinal marijuana at, on New Birth campus? You know what? No. I wanted, I was rooting for that. Yeah, well, you, you were in a great minority. <laughs> I was... Yes. In a great minority. Yes. God said, <laughs> I, go home another way. I think way. it was amazing, though, because I, we don't think like that at all. And when I think about, you know, us being in the marketplace as believers, yeah. why not? Uh, I'm going to leave that to y'all in Mississippi. Okay. I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to do housing okay, in Georgia. Okay, I got you. Got you. I love yes. what you're doing. Congratulations you. on that. Thank you. I think that's going to be amazing for so many first-time buyers. Yes. Uh, yeah, so that's beautiful. Thank great you. job, Pastor. Thank great you. job. And, you know, I asked you earlier what is the key to prosperity? I think you're already doing it, giving to people. Yes. Like the Bible says, a generous shall prosper. And so you're making a big statement at New Birth. I think you guys feed how many people for Thanksgiving and Christmas? We have, over the pandemic, fed a million families. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Only God could do it. And you've been here four years? Four years. Yeah. There's people have been pastoring decades that haven't done something like this. So, Faith ain't fair. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's ama I'm really proud of you. That's Thank amazing. You. So why do you think it's important for the unchurched black man to have a sense of belonging at church? Yeah. Uh, I think that um, something is wrong if the mosque is 80% men and mm. the church is 80% women. Mm. It suggests it's not that men are not spiritual. Mm -hmm. They just want a place of discipline and instruction. Yeah. Uh, and I think that once you have uh, that instilled in your men, mm -hmm. it'll transform the community, it'll impact the children, and it'll shift the environment. Yeah. Uh, and so New Birth, under my predecessor, Bishop Eddie Long, held a standard mm -hmm. 
of what it meant to really raise men in the community. And yeah. that was the secret sauce mm -hmm. of New Birth's growth in many ways, is tapping into uh, the vein of black men. Yes. I see a lot of men on your live on Sundays, and I'm yeah. always loving that. It's oh, amazing. Thank Speaks you. volumes about your leadership as well. I'm grateful. Yeah. yeah. So how, how would you say, as it relates to men being involved at church, yeah. it's one thing for them to come and then being involved. How would yeah. you say you're being able to make moves in that area as as it relates to men being involved. Yeah. Is men, uh, John Eldridge wrote a book, mm -hmm. says men need to have a goal to keep, mm -hmm. a battle to fight, okay. and a woman to love. Hmm. If he has all three of those, he's in divine alignment. Mm -hmm. And so men are not coming to church to turn to your neighbor. Yeah. You have to give men a task. So as a consequence, when you join the Nation of Islam, you got to go on the corner and sell the final call. Yeah. When you join Jehovah's Witness, mm -hmm. you got to go knock on 300 doors. Yeah. The black church, you join, you got to give the right hand of fellowship. Right. There is no assignment. Hmm. So when you give men an assignment, give them a task, give them a responsibility, mm -hmm. they'll always lead. I think you should speak to the camera right there because so many right. people are going to take that nugget right today. Yes. So, yeah, no, and I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Listen, I give it freely. I, if <laughs> yeah. you give men something to do, yeah. uh, they'll always do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's by no accident that men, the uh, sell, highest seller uh, for Father's Day is a toolkit. Mm. A man with a toolkit will find something to fix. Yeah. A man without a toolkit will end up breaking something. Mm -hmm. And so you got to find out what is the thing that that man can work on and what it is that he can develop. I love it. I love it. You stated in another interview that most churches recycle saints but do not go after sinners. Yes. Do you think this is why our churches have had a hard time recovering after the pandemic? Yeah. Is that uh, the church wanted to go back to business as normal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that we've got a... Albert Einstein said the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing, expecting different, different results. results yeah. uh, is uh, not put God in a box. Mm -hmm. So many people want the pre-pandemic God yeah. <laughs> uh, and are afraid of the post-pandemic reality. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that we've got to reposition ourselves, reshape ourselves mm -hmm. uh, to re re reach the mandate of this present age. Mm -hmm. Most churches, 95% of the churches who are watching me are on Facebook. Yeah. But all their children are on TikTok. So true. So we got to figure out how do we tap into that generation mm -hmm. who, who left Facebook mm -hmm. after their parents friended them. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get yeah, it. so I think that we, it's up to us to really reinvent ourselves. How has the pandemic affected your pastoral leadership? Like yeah. What has it changed about how you pastor? Is realizing I don't pastor a local church. Mm. I pastor a global church. Amen. I, and so... Three times the amount of those who are sitting in my sanctuary are on my stream. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I stand, I have to realize that I am preaching to nations yeah. without a stamp on the passport. Yes. And so our global lexicon has got to increase. Mm -hmm. So I got a responsibility to preach about what's happening in the Ukraine, mm -hmm. about what's happening in Haiti, mm -hmm. what's happening in Washington. Yeah. Not just what's happening in DeKalb County. Yeah. I th I've, one thing I really admire about you, and I know a lot of people don't, but I really admire what you have done recently, is you went to the church and you apologized to the... What, what was LGBTQ it? The LGBTQ community. I don't And let me add some clarity to okay. it. I apologized not for the gospel. Mm -hmm. I apologized for our treatment. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Don't love the neighbors you agree with. Yes. <laughs> Don't love the neighbors. I feel neighbors like the people of... who want to understand it understand that yeah, already. Yeah, 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 but they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> they took that sound bite. So it was yeah. a convention of LGBTQ mm -hmm. churches. They met in Atlanta, and they invited me to come mm -hmm. to do a panel on branding. Mm -hmm. I moved the conversation in a whole nother agenda. Gotcha. And I moved it because sitting on the third row of that conference mm -hmm. was a young man mm -hmm. who was a member of my church in Baltimore. Hmm. And I stopped and I asked him how old he was. He says, 32. Mm -hmm. I said, how old were you when you came to my church in Baltimore? He said, 15. Wow. So what you all did not see in the clip mm -hmm. is I apologized to him mm -hmm. because in that church, I am his spiritual father. Mm -hmm. I then asked on that stage, how long have you been in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. said he's been in Atlanta three years. I then turned in my seat and looked at Bishop Allen, who was the host mm -hmm. and the pastor of an LGBT affirming church here in Atlanta. And I said to him, I owe him an apology mm -hmm. because I'm his spiritual father. But he has come out as gay since I've left mm -hmm. and didn't feel safe coming to me. So thank you for pastoring him mm -hmm. where I have failed him. So that part is what is not in the clip. <laughs> I uh, and I can't even think of uh -huh. how many people's sons and daughters and uh -huh. nieces and nephews have left the church, yeah. drum roll, because uh -huh. they didn't feel, feel the safe. love of God. They didn't feel safe. Yeah, yeah. and so that, that's, that's what the onus of that apology uh -huh. was around. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I think it was big of you, yeah. seriously. Uh, of course, you know, with social media, we always get... I'm, you experience it, Bishop sure. Jake's experience. Yes. So many preachers experience that from mm -hmm. those little clips, people yeah. take it and make. But I already knew, I think just understanding, I guess what's amazing how people will place judgment yet they never heard you preach, they never right. watched the interview, they've never done anything to connect with you beyond that clip. Right. And so I, so I think my connection to your ministry, I already knew the right. heart in well, it. thank you. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm going to make you my publicist. <laughs> thank you. I'll go, I'll go with thank you. you. I'll take care of it. <laughs> Um, I don't know, though, because, you know, I fight, so I don't know if you want no, to take No, I do. Okay. Yeah, so you cool with it? I need it. a Peter. Okay, cool. Yeah, but carry I, your switchblade with you. Listen, I hold it down now. All right, I thank you. I hold it you. down. <laughs> I got a last question for you, I All think. Right. Why do you think black people should be intentional about supporting other black people? Uh, because this question is not asked to any other ethnicity. Hmm. Uh, in the uh, Asian community, the dollar circulates 24 times. Mm -hmm before they give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. In the Jewish community, 17 times. Mm -hmm. In the Latino community, 12 times. In the white community, nine times. For black people, we have our check just 30 minutes wow. before we give our money to somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to spend with each other. You said 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Wow. If I gave you $100 right now, mm -hmm. says, sis, thank you all for coming. Have a safe trip mm -hmm. back to Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I'm scared yeah. that within 30 minutes your husband got to stop for gas mm -hmm. and he's giving it to a Pakistani guy. Yeah. You hungry. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to stop at Chick-fil-A. Why you had to use that example? Are you pregnant? I'm, <laughs> I'm, it's, it's cheap grace. I get yeah, it. I yeah. get it. <laughs> that wasn't the Holy Ghost. I just, I just, yeah. So I, we have to be intentional on how it is that we do it. Yeah. I, uh, I'm going tomorrow to the opening of uh, Atlanta Fashion Week. Mm -hmm in which I'm going to give a challenge. How many days could you dress mm -hmm. if you could only wear black designers? Hmm. Could you get out the bed? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I right. had to go online and Google, is there black people that make underclothes? Yeah. And there's five companies. Mm -hmm. There are people yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So you have to just be intentional to mm -hmm. do it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So I told everybody at the beginning of the show, I just decided... I don't even think that he would pay me any attention, but this is going to go into his request. I don't know why you checked your request that day. Me neither. <laughs> but I am so grateful. No, I'm glad to be with you. I, yeah, I asked him when he came in. I said, so how many people DM you? And you say, okay, yeah, I'm down. And yeah. you said, not many. Not many. I'm honored to have you here. I'm with the, I'm with the wine as millions didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I'm so grateful. Of, I like the... Uh, think of everybody here, the viewers, as friends. Thank uh, you. Friend Fusion is a relational podcast where we teach people to value and love one another. And so I knew that when I saw your apology at this convention, yeah. that I had to have you here. Thank uh, you. Because I think that's what it's really all about, valuing people, not talking about our sexuality, not talking about yeah. how much money we make, where we live, all of the stuff that separates us, you know? Yeah. And I think it is so important for us to treat one another as, or love one another as we love ourselves. No, and it's so easy for us to cancel people yes. when they're not like us. Yeah. And the assignment of Friend Fusion is to cancel the cancel culture. Yeah. And so when I saw you do that, I said, I'm just going to go for it, and you are here. Yeah, but uh, my <laughs> response is you can't cancel what you don't have a subscription to. Now, I ain't got my organ today. All right, let's go. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be with Thank you. Thank you. I really, it's really, a privilege. I really, really appreciate you and coming And y'all zoom in on these boots. Y'all got to see. <laughs> y'all see these boots? 
It's going to change the world. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Is there anything you, you want to leave with our friends before we go? No, just that I am honored. Stay plugged in. Make sure that you follow, you subscribe, and you share it Thank all you. along. You got enough enemies. You finally found two friends. Amen. And y'all, I'm I'm gonna be hosting a new birth service in about yes. a month or so. So I want yeah. y'all to tune in. Uh, yeah. You got to. Thank you. <laughs> I had to take my opportunity. Oh, no. Friends, oh. thank you for joining us for this episode of Friend Fusion. I hope that it has blessed you. I hope that it encouraged you to love better, to love intentionally, and be proud of being black. I love that that Pastor Jamal has taught us. You know, not these conversations that we have. Some of the questions that I have are not being asked in any other ethnicity. It's so no. true. And so be proud to be black this week. But it, more so than anything else, be proud to love and love well. So whatever you do this week, friend, go and friend. Do it well. I love y'all. I'll see you back on the next episode of Friend Fusion. Bye. Did you really think I was going to play nice with you? Do you really think I was going to come in here and be what? Above it all? You are a mean woman. You asked for it. <laughs>